Hello everyone out there in Luryland. Thank you so much for joining us. Ben with Skylight TV here. Welcome to another edition of what we like to call our virtual programming. So the weather's starting to get nicer here in Chicago. Hopefully that means we're going to bring you more content coming out this summer. So keep an eye on that. But for today, we're up north in the beautiful neighborhood of Lake. Whoa, man, stop. We're trying to film. Cut. Stop. Hey everyone. Some of you might not know, but Chicago is actually home to some of the best street art in the entire nation. Not only that, some of the best artists in the entire world live right here in Chicago. I think that's pretty amazing. So speaking of amazing, we're joined now by a good friend of mine, E. Lee, who's actually in the progress of painting a mural right now. E. Lee, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So if I'm not mistaken, you fancy yourself an artist, right? Sure, I do. Okay, so obviously many, many different types of artists out there. Can you speak to a little bit about what kind of artist you are specifically and maybe a little bit about your background? I'd be considered maybe an urban contemporary artist, a uh, street artist. I do work for galleries and uh, do murals. I've been a full-time artist for seven, eight years now. So you mentioned murals, and from what I understand, you've done murals locally and all over the world. Can you talk about some of the murals you've done, where they're at, like locally and abroad? In Chicago, there's a few in West Town, uh, Wicker Park, Bucktown. Uh, there's two in Uptown, uh, Lakeview, and then around there's Bloomington Normal, uh, Spring Green, Wisconsin, Flint, Michigan, New York. What about across the seas? I know you got some around the world, right? Yeah, Amsterdam, Barcelona, London. There's some in Japan, in uh, Osaka, and Nagoya. Okay, so one reason I love summers in Chicago is because all the amazing street art that goes up throughout the city. So actually, you're doing a mural right now as we speak. Can you talk about this mural and tell us about what it is you're painting? A series I do, it's with gold frames and it's about uh, a little bit of a comment on contemporary art and typical subjects throughout art history. So uh, dancers, uh, landscapes, other artists work, things like that, but I usually have them coming through the frame or there's shadows and light, that's what's important, is to create some depth. This is a dancer coming out of the frame is what it will be. questions from the kids, a lot of them here, and there are a lot of good ones. One we got here is, what was the process of making this piece from start to finish? Can you talk about that? Well, the very beginning of it was I did a show in 2018 with Hubbard Street Dance Company. I worked with five or six dancers taking photos where they were trying different things through the frame and behind the frame, interacting with the frame. I picked my favorite and made paintings, and then we did a show in 2018 where those dancers performed in a gallery space with the paintings up. This particular piece was seen by this building owner. They loved it and they wanted it on the side of their building. From there it was doing mock-ups, getting it approved by the Chamber of Commerce. Then the actual painting was setting it up on the wall, doing a, what I call a doodle grid, and then laying out each color and starting to fill it in. That leads to another question we have. They're curious, who do you need permission from to do a mural or street art? So you're saying this one's specific building owner but can you talk about what that process is like? Uh, lots of times it's just the building owner. Okay. You just have to get their permission and then you can paint. Uh, but this particular situation had the Lakeview Chamber of Commerce contact the building and said this wall is amazing. Would you want something on this? We'd help fund it. We'd help organize it and, and uh, commission. So that leads to our next question. You said commission which usually means getting paid. So you are getting paid for this mural correct? Yes. I'd say my first I don't know, four or five paintings, street art pieces I did was just for me. I got permission from the building owner and I did it, but uh, everything in the past five years has been, somebody paid me to create it. When you put this street art up, does it just stay up forever? Or do you get to a certain time, you have to come back and clean it off? Uh, some are up for only a month. Some are up for only a year. Like those would be rotating walls. So that means that every month or every year, a new artist comes in and paint something on that wall so you know the time limit. This particular one will probably be up for a very long time. Uh, if somebody tags it, they usually put a uh, 
tag shield on it so they could spray that off. So, so what, is, what does tagging mean exactly? Tagging, some person just coming by with a spray can or uh, and painting whatever they want over the top of something without permission. What do you think people will feel when they see your piece, when they're walking by? It's a bit of a contradiction, the, the piece is. So it's a flat wall and I'm trying to make it look three-dimensional. Um, there's a dancer that's kind of hiding her gaze and kind of within herself, but then she's also searching outside the frame with her hands and her feet are outside the frame. So that dichotomy I think is interesting to people. I, I hope that they identify with a feeling that maybe they felt before that they feel like the dancer might be feeling. This is a really interesting question. I wanna make sure I get it right, but one patient in a hospital wanted to know, Here's and I quote, I did an enlargement drawing for a class and we drew a small grid over a picture of our favorite animated character. And then we drew a larger grid and square by square recreated the same picture, but just bigger. Is this how you do a mural like yours? That is one way to do a mural. Uh, and lots of people do that. Uh, you can use a projector. So if you draw something small, you can project it as big as you need and do that. Uh, what I did was a doodle grid. I made an outline of where the frame was. I filled it all in with just flat color. Then I made all these doodles. I take a picture of that, and in Photoshop, I place that over the, the image I wanna do, and it shows me, like a grid does, where everything goes. So you mentioned graffiti earlier. What is the difference between graffiti and street art, exactly? They can overlap a lot, but uh, graffiti is typically letter form based. Uh, some of it can be character based, but it's typically somebody's name or their their tag is a name that they've come up with and named themselves and that's what they put everywhere. And then street art is more of a, what people would do in a gallery, they put outside in a bigger scenario. Next question here, we actually have a lot of really good artists, some kids at the hospital, they're actually really amazing. You should actually come see them sometime, huh? Sure. But anyways, they're curious if you had any advice, if they were looking to pursue a career in art, any advice you might be able to give them? First would be to know what you like. So you need to look at art. So you look at a lot of art and know what stuff speaks to you. Once you know what kind of art you like, you should try to explore that. So you can try to make your own. Um, and then you need to get in front of people. You don't really know what art connects on a bigger scale until it's in front of people because then you see everything you make you might love and everything you make you might hate. But once you get it in front of other people, you start to see what it is that connects with people. And, and you need to follow that. Uh, what you love that connects with someone else. So right, so kids out there watching, just keep in mind, you can make a career out of art. Look at, you're a full-time artist, correct? Yep. You can do this full-time. You can make thousands of dollars on one mural. Yeah. Yeah, you can sell work and make thousands of dollars on one piece. So yeah, you can. Amazing. All right, so now we got one more piece here. We like to call it the Lurry Lightning Round. Just some really quick questions we ask you. We'll ask them, you just, whatever pops in your head, just say it. Sound good? Let's do it. All right, cool, yeah, so some energy, right? We're excited to be here, okay, let's do it. All right, first off, who is your favorite artist? Lichtenstein, Thibault. Lichtenstein, Thibault, which one? We need one. I, yeah. Next question, when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be a professional football player, then I wanted to be a professional baseball player, then I wanted to be a professional soccer player. Next up, favorite pizza topping? Pepperoni. Pepperoni, perfect. Favorite Disney movie? Uh. Two hours later. Lion King. Favorite musician? Radiohead. Radiohead, nice one. I like that. What is your favorite color? Green. Green. Last up, super controversial, chocolate or vanilla? Vanilla. Vanilla? Yeah. I, I, I tagged you as a chocolate guy. <laughs> all vanilla. All vanilla. Oh, no. All right. Well, that's oh, good to know. Okay, so we know you got... A lot of work to do here, so we're going to get out of your hair, but we just want to say, for me and from Lurie Children's Hospital, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. We really appreciate that. Yeah. For everybody watching, we're going to actually have a time-lapse video where we're going to be able to show you his whole piece from start to finish. You, know, you should come visit us sometime at the hospital. What do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, perfect. I think the kids really love that. So again, thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Stay tuned for future content coming out this summer, and thanks everyone, and peace and love. Bye-bye.